His book, Raised by Musical Mavericks, recalling the life lessons from Pete Seeger, Lightning Hopkins, Doc Watson, Reverend Gary Davis, and others, is a memoir disguised as a music book, or a music book disguised as a memoir. It describes how a series of powerful musical mentors affected the formative years of its uh, the author, Mitchell Greenhill, who, by the way, is a fine musician himself. Take it away, Mitch. Thank you. Uh, this is the foreword to the book, Running with the Herd. When I was in my late 20s, between jobs, between marriages, even as I see now between stages of my life, I took a gig playing lead guitar in a country western band in Marshall, California. Overlooking Tomales Bay, the modest roadhouse sat squarely on the San Andreas Fault, and so it divided a couple of the planet's tectonic plates, as well as chapters of my life. Despite the unstable location, and despite a grumpy band leader, I found this a comfortable perch from which to ponder my next direction. One of the job's few advantages was the soothing hour-long commute along a softly wooded coastline. On one such drive, after work and after midnight, my guitar and amplifier resting in the bed of my Dodge van, a full moon glowed so brightly and the road was so deserted that I dared to turn off my headlights and let nature illuminate Route 1. As soon as I did, a herd of deer ambled out from the forest. About a dozen of these gentle creatures, mostly yearlings with the stubble of new antlers, glided beside my vehicle and in front and behind. I felt adopted as a temporary member of their tribe. No longer spooked by my headlights, they ran alongside my van for some time, navigating the coast's circuitous inlets, the click of their hooves on the roadway providing a percussive accompaniment to the drone of my six-cylinder engine. The intense moonlight reflected through the scrub oaks and off my companions, casting their shadows onto the pavement. Eventually, we reached what must have been the their turf's northern frontier, and sadly they loped away, handing me off to the next stage of my journey. As I look back, that special sense of inclusion and its loss have been a central metaphor in my life. Traveling with the band or outside its enchanted contours has been a consistent personal barometer my early memories of this date back to my 13th year, when an informal tribe of musicians started visiting our family and sleeping in the spare bedroom. They too surrounded and embraced me within their magic circle. On the one hand, I was a normal teenager dealing with high school and hormones. But at the same time, because my father embarked on a midlife career change into the music business, I was receiving a crash course in the roots of American vernacular music. My dad, Manny Greenhill, had professional relationships with the musicians described in these pages, and other listeners became their fans and followers. Meanwhile, I was sharing a bathroom with, with them, having breakfast with them, learning guitar licks from them, and riding home with them after the concerts and parties. If I had been more aware at the time, I might have paid closer attention and picked up on things that I'm sure I missed. I might not, for example, have lost that song that Willie Dixon gave me or missed that party with Mississippi John Hurt. But it was always clear to me from the first time that Pete Seeger and Sonny Terry stepped into our living room that these artists would be important to me, though I did not yet comprehend how. It was this tribe of musicians who gave welcoming and sometimes challenging support to this curious kid. As on that moonlit night with the deer, 
They opened my heart and showed me a way forward.